Hi, my name is Leander Facchinetti, and in this video, I want to talk to you about using masks in the video processor in Reaper. First of all, what can you do with masks? Well, you can do compositing like this. I appear here in the corner with rounded corners. So you can do these rounded corners here in Reaper using masks, and you can do alpha compositing in general, any kind of compositing with different layers that are not necessarily rectangular. Also, you can do classy transitions like these. So check this out. Super classy, right? <laughs> yeah, this is a silly example, but you can do more sophisticated things as well. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the video processors that I created in Reaper to use masks. Then I will show you how to make a mask um, using Keynote to just make the mask that you can use with the video processors. And then I will also go over the code for the video processors. I will review the code and show you how everything works in case you want to adapt it to your needs. So let's jump right in. And here in Reaper, we have actually different ways to set up. So I have a project here with several different tracks and I'm going to start with my preferred method, which is this first one. I'm going to open here the video pre preview and you can see that the composition is already in place here. So I am going to first delete the thing that I did to make this work and show you the footage. So I have here in one layer, my camera and in another, another layer, I have my computer screen. And then I need to download some assets. I need to go here to my repository for Reaper and the link for this will be in the description below. And I have to download both things from data and effect chains. And usually I tell people to just install everything using Repack, but as far as I can tell, there is no way for me to distribute effects chains. So while that is impossible, I asked for the developers of Repack to maybe implement this feature, but while that is impossible, you have to come here to effects chains and download all these masks by hand. And the way you do that is just by coming here to this folder and then to the video processor that has to do with masks. There are several of them. Click on each one of them, raw, and then save. And of course you can save this whatever you want, but I think it's better if you save this on the folder for effect chains in Reaper. So if you go to this folder and save it there, then it will appear in Reaper automatically. If you don't know where that folder is, you can come to options and show Reaper resource path in Explorer Finder, and then look for effects chains there. So that's where you want to save, and you will now you will end up with all these files that have this RFX chain extension. And also you need to download the masks. So they are here under the data folder. And I have two examples of masks: the rounded corners that you see around my face right now, and also this other one with the silly transition. So you can download that as well if you're interested. I'm going to show you later how to do all of this by yourself if you want. Anyway, so once you have that, uh, that downloaded, then you probably want to, I should have mentioned this, you probably want to download the image or the video, the masks. You want to download them to your project folder so that they are available as a media item here on the project folder. So I'm, I have here in the project directory, both the bunny, also the rounded corners. And for this one, I want to use the rounded corners. So I just drop that image as another track here, as another media item in another track on top of the camera and the computer. And then I'm going to extend this so that it goes until the end of the footage. And then I'll open the effects chains and here I already have that. I, uh, if you download everything and put it in the right place, you may need to right click here and scan for new plugins. And then you'll have all these video processors, uh, effects chains. And this one is the masked 
the, the mask and overlay example. So for to, to make this work, you drag uh, the mask and overlay example here on the mask, on the image that is the mask. And once you do that, you can close all the windows, go to preview, and you can see that the mask is already in place. So the video processor will do both the masking with the rounded corners as well as the compositing of putting my face on top of the, the computer. And of course, this is just an example. And if you need something else, maybe you need your face to be somewhere else, or maybe you don't want rounded corners, but some other kind of compositing. Maybe you want to do one of those tricky shots where you appear twice in the shot and you appear on the left and on the right. And you can do that with compositing like this. You just put yourself on the left here and yourself on the right here. And as long as the background is the same, you can do some kind of compositing that will make it look like you are twice in the shot. So uh, you can do all sorts of shenanigans with alpha compositing. And if you need to change anything to make that work, then you can come here to the video processor and edit this code. And if you need to understand what's going on here, then keep watching because later in the video, I will show you everything that's going on here. That's one way to set things up. But sometimes you want to reuse the compositing, the, the masked layer multiple times. So here, the, ma the, the layer that is masked is my face. And I am only using this in one shot that, it, that is the compositing of my screen along with my face. But suppose that I had this, this, com this rounded corners and I wanted to use that in multiple places in different ways. Maybe because I have a different way that to show this in which the face is down here on the right. Because I am showing something here on the upper right and I want to move my face. So I want to have another view. Well, in that case, you may want to reuse the masked camera in multiple places. So if you want to do that, then this second workflow will work best. And again, I'm going to open here the preview and you can see that, yeah, it is still the same but it's set up differently. So let's remove all this and recreate it. So again, I have just my camera and my computer, the same deal as before. Now I'll open here and I will again drag and drop the mask onto on top of the layers that I'm masking. But this time I am going to apply a different effect. This time I'm going to apply the mask effect. And I can close this and I will open preview so you can see what's going on. So without anything else here, then you can see that this is just applying the mask and you can see the rounded corners. And of course you can see the rounded corners because I'm using the rounded corners mask, but you can use any other mask that will apply similarly. Now, when you want to actually compose things, then I am going to drag and drop here holding command, probably control on a PC, but I'm not sure, but you can drag and drop and this is going to create an empty media item so that I can drag and drop another effect here. So I will drag and drop the masked overlay example. So this is not mask and overlay, those are not verbs. This is a masked overlay. And again, just an example, it is similar to the one before. It is going to put my face on the upper right corner of the video like that. But you can come here and change the code here for how the mask works. And you can reuse that masked layer for other kinds of compositing that you need to do. So that's the second way to set up. And that's when you want to do some compositing like that. But what if you want to do one of those silly transitions like the one with the bunny that I showed you before? Then to do that, I already have here the setup and I'm going to show you how that looks. Let me make this smaller. So yeah, it looks like the bunny. It's not super fast. The preview here kind of lags and that's because my computer isn't great with video. It's not that fast. And when you're doing this kind of compositing, then it kind of makes things slower, especially during preview. But even doing, during rendering, I feel like it takes a toll. It makes the rendering 
somewhat slower, but I really like the rounded corners. I think they go really well with the rest of the operating system. In fact, I made this image so that the rounded corners matched the rounded corners in the operating system. So you can see these rounded corners, for instance, match the ones around my face. Isn't that neat? Yeah, <laughs> I had a lot of fun measuring and making that work. Anyway, I, st I still think that it's uh, worth doing this, even though it's somewhat slower. Anyway, how do I do the setup for the transition? Well, first of all, I'm going to delete this to recreate it. I have to line up the camera and the computer so that they are overlapping for a moment. And that's when the transition is going to take place. Again, we are going to drag and drop the mask. And in this case, the mask is not an image, it's a video. I'm going to show you how to create one of these videos in a moment. So it's a video, and then you can overlay the video so that it's matching the end and the beginning of the, the, the items that are going to be transitioned. So if I just play this right now, you're going to see that the mask is just a video of a mask is a, a video in black and white. So if I play this, you're going to see my face for a moment and then the mask and then the other uh, camera, the other shot. Now to make this work, to actually do the transition with alpha compositing, you have to again come to the effects and I have an example here, not an example, it's uh, really the, the code that you want to use every time for transitions, I guess. So in this case, it's the mask transition and I want, and I have two flavors. I'm going to show you why I have two flavors. Sometimes you want to transition from the top to the bottom, sometimes you're previous item is on the top track and your next item is on the bottom track. And in that case, you want to transition top to bottom and that's the one you drag. And here it is, you can close all this now and then you can see that it's super slow, but it's doing the transition. But sometimes, and that's why I have this other example here. Sometimes your track that you are transitioning from is on the bottom and the track that you're transitioning to is on the top. And for that, I have another video processor that is a transition from bottom to top. And that's the one you drag here on this item if you want to make this work. If you do it the other way, way around, if you get the wrong one, for instance, here I have a transition from bottom to top, but I'm going to drag the transition top to bottom. I'm, I drag it there and I close all this, open preview, and you're going to see that it doesn't really work. Yeah, it's all messed up. So I have my, the screen and then all, the, all of the sudden you see my face and then the transition comes in with the screen and then you see my face, it's just all messed up. So you want to make sure that you grab the right one depending on the order of your tracks. And sometimes you'll have transition, your project may look like this, right? You go from A row to B row and then to A row. So that's why I have two flavors of the effect because you could drag the effect here and then change from uh, bottom to top on this one and from top to bottom on this one. And this way you can transition with fancy transitions as many times as you like without having to have a million tracks just to have the transitions go. If you had maybe media that looked like this, and then you would have to include transitions from top to bottom every time, and your project would just be a huge cascade of media, it would be annoying. So anyway, that's why you have two different flavors of this uh, effect. Now let's talk about how you can actually build one of these images that are a mask. So sometimes the transition is a video and sometimes it's just a still, an image. And I'm going to show you how to create that using the tool I actually used to create these images. Uh, I used Keynote, but you can definitely use any other software that will produce images and videos. Probably the easiest to use is Keynote, but PowerPoint should also work. What the heck, maybe even Google Docs will work for this. Or of course, if you already know some other kind of animation tool or graphics tool, then you can use, use that as well because a mask is nothing fancy. It is just either an image that is black and white or a video 
black and white. So I can show you the video for the bunny transition. It's just a video in black and white. And in those images and videos, whatever is black is going to be transparent. So either the rounded corners will be transparent because this image has this one has black on the edges. I guess that's kind of hard to see. Yeah, the black is on the edges and then that becomes transparent and whatever is white will be opaque. It will show up and you can, if you want, have some shades of gray and then the thing will be transparent, but not really completely transparent. You can do that if you want. I don't have that in these examples here, but that will just work just fine. Anyway, coming here to Keynote, of course you can do that in any kind of software that does graphics, but that's the one I know and I like it. I also use it to create thumbnails for YouTube, it's great. So I want to make sure that the aspect ratio of my slides match the aspect ratio of my video and I can change that here or I can just create a presentation and I'm choosing a preset that starts with a back, black background because most of my things will be transparent. So that's why I'm starting like that. I can delete all these. And another way to set this up is coming here to document. You can change the size of the slides. So if your screen, if your video doesn't have one of these two formats, you can come here to custom and you can change, maybe you, our video is in portrait or maybe it's a square or it has a weird aspect ratio. In any case, my videos tend to be in 2K. So I'm going to edit this. So now the canvas is 2K and I will have another opportunity to change this size when I'm exporting. But I think it makes sense to have the size already in place here. At least the aspect ratio, I think, needs to be right from the get-go. Anyway, so now I have a black canvas to work with and I can create any kind of shape or animation here in white. And for instance, let's make this an arrow and I'll make it really big so that most of the screen is showing. And I kind of want to make the arrow fat like so. And yeah. So now I can come here to file, export to images, and I like my images in PNG, but I think JPEG would work just fine. I can click on next and export this to the folder where I have my example project. I'll call this arrow. And then coming back here to Reaper, I can come to the arrow folder and I will replace the first compositing, the first example, I will replace the mask that was the rounded corners with my new arrow thing. And I, of course, need to drag the mask, the mask and overlay example. Now let's close all these and open the preview. And you can see that now my face is in an arrow. Awesome. And if you wanted to do video like the bunny, you can also do that. It's not that hard. So I will just drag the arrow here to the left and I will come here to animate and I'll add an, a move effect. Let's see if I can make this appear on the screen. Yes, move. And then I can move this to whatever I want. I'll move this in here. What the heck, why not? And then I will add another action that is a move again. And this will just increase so that in, in, in your transitions, you probably want to start with pure black and end with pure white. So that's what this is going to do. If I hit preview here right under my face, I actually want to preview the whole thing. So I'll open here, build order and preview this one. So the arrow comes in and then it increases and then the screen ends being completely white and that makes the transition smooth. If you end up with a video that is not exactly white at the end or not exactly black in the beginning, then your transition will not be smooth because one of the two videos will just blink on the screen for a while, for a frame really. Anyway, so now that I have this, I have this animation I can come here to export to and this time I want to export to a movie. And yeah, playback, self-playing, you cannot even change this. 
and all the slides because I just have one. I don't want any padding. I don't want the video to wait before the arrow comes in. So I'll just take out all this uh, wait times, all these delays. And here on resolution, probably by default, it will be here, but you can come here to custom and that's your second chance to change the size. I advise you to just keep the size of the slide correct and then make this size match. I think that's the best approach. And the frame rate should be the same frame rate you are using in your Reaper project. And the compression type should be the one that, uh, I guess anyone would work probably, Reaper will be able to open all of these. I'm putting this in this format because it is the most standard that kind of works everywhere. And then I'll come here to the same directory and I'll now have arrow M4V and that is another flavor of MP4. Now this is a creating a movie and that's that's really fast because it's a small movie, just black and white. Now I have arrow M4V and you can see that it's just that narrow coming in and expanding. Coming here to Reaper, I can come to one of these transitions and I will drop in my arrow M4V. Where is it? Here it is. So now I'll drag this and I will line things up perfectly. Oh, all right. So that's good. And of course, I need to drag in the mask transition top to bottom in this case. And now let's preview this. An arrow comes in super slowly and then it expands. Of course, when exporting this, when I actually render the project, it will not lag that much. It will be smooth, it will be perfect. Speaking of efficiency, I want to mention that between these two approaches for compositing, the one where you are doing the compositing in just one effect and the other one in which you're doing the compositing in two effects, one is doing the mask and the other one is doing the compositing, I thought that this one would, the second one would be faster, it would be better and, and snappier when previewing, but I was surprised to learn that in my experience, this one is actually faster. So if you are not reusing the mask and you have no better reason to do it like this, then I, I recommend that you do this approach. It's also simpler. It's one less track that you need to put here on the project and one less item that you have to keep around. So I think that's better. That's just my advice. On the other hand, the second approach, the code for it is simpler. It is conceptually simpler. So if you are doing, um, if you are editing the code to make it work for you and you are finding that this code is too complicated, we'll go over the code. It's not that hard. But anyway, if you think that this one is too complicated, then you may prefer this one because the code for it is slightly simpler. It doesn't need a temporary image, simpler to understand. Oh, and, and one more thing that I think is important. When you're seeing these videos and the video you're watching right now, and even this preview, you may have noticed that I have rounded corners here around my screen, and you may be thinking, oh, that is also done with masks in Reaper, and that's not the case. If you are thinking, oh, there is some magic going on here. No, that's not the case. The computer.mp4 already has the rounded corners. In fact, that's what my desktop looks like. It has rounded corners here. That's not the default in macOS, but that's the way I have my desktop set up. The way I'm doing this setup is a story for another day. Anyway, let's move on to the code review. Now, we are going to look at the video processors and the code for it. So if you're only interested in using masks and you have already uh, decided on which masks you are going to use, you may not even need to watch this. And if you're not interested in code, then you definitely don't want to watch this. So thanks for watching. Bye. I see you on the next one. And for those of, who, of you who do want to learn about the code to make this work, then let's jump right in. As I said, the code for this second method is simpler. So that's what we are, where we are going to start. Let's start with the mask. So what this code is doing is doing the mask. When I have only this code, I'm going to mute this track so it doesn't affect the output. When I have only the effect that we are looking at here, you are applying the mask. So without the effect, this has square, um, it has sharp corners, 
and with the mask it has rounded corners, but of course it could be any kind of mask. So what the code is doing here is first it's defining a variable because in the documentation for the video processor they have this all these modes of operation and the flags have nothing to do with, they're just numbers, they have nothing to do with their intent. So I thought it would be nice to assign a variable to communicate, yeah, that is the flag that I'm using, I'm using the mode multiply. What is the mode multiply and what is a mode? We are about to talk about this. Hang on. First, I need to talk about the color space. So usually the videos don't have any kind of transparency but if you activate this color space for red, green, blue, alpha, the alpha is for transparency. So that's how you get transparency. If I comment this out and save, then I guess it still works. What? What the hell? Hang on. Yeah, it, it seems like it still works on this case. I don't know. I'm perplexed. But in, I'm, I'm sure that in other cases, you do need to specify the color space. Oh, I think that if I disable this mute, then I'm actually doing the compositing and then the color space is necessary. No, it's not, I'm wrong. Anyway, there are places in which you need to activate this RGBA mode for the transparency to work. So I always activate the R RGBA color space when I'm doing masks. And then the rest of the code looks like this. So first I'm going to blit. Blit is render on the screen. Put the image on the screen. What image on the screen depends on the argument. So if you pass zero as the argument, then you are rendering your current item. So let's see what this looks like by commenting out the rest of the code. And when I save, you can see that now I'm rendering that image. That is the PNG with a rectangle with uh, rounded corners. That's what I'm doing. I'm rendering the current image, the one that the effect was applied on. Then I am going to do a trick here because the image is black and white, but actually I would like the colors black and white or gray to map to transparency. So I want black to be transparent and white to be uh, opaque to show up. So for that to work, I'm going to call this GFX Evo Rect, Evaluate Rectangle. And I have to pass the coordinates of the rectangle. It starts on the top left and it spans through the whole project window that the, those two variables come with the video processor already. So what I'm doing here is hitting F1 to show up the video processor reference in case you are new to this. And then uh, project width and height are here. So they represent, this is actually a rectangle that spans through the whole window. And then I have to pass as a string, the code that I want to run for every pixel on this rectangle. So for every pixel on this image, I want to run this. And what this is going to do is uh, run this code. And this code is assigning a variable A so A stands for alpha. So I'm saying that the alpha or the transparency of this image must be equal to R. R is the red channel. I have no way of getting the brightness, so I have no way of getting black or white or gray. So I'm just doing this quick hack and I'm looking at the red because in images that are black and white or gray, the red, the green, and the blue are all the same. So I can look at any one of the three channels or I could be smart and combine the channels in some different way. And then I would have masks that could be colored and the colors would map to different things. But anyway, because I am doing this the simplest way, I'm just saying, look at the red and map the alpha to the red. Now, whatever the thing is white or gray, that will map to something that is opaque or slightly transparent, but then black, we'll have a red of zero. So alpha will be zero, which means make this completely transparent. And now I will change the mode of operation. So the thing that I'm about to do is blit or render the image right below, the image from the camera. But I don't want to blit the image from the camera just 
on top of what I have right, right now. So if I don't have any mode set here, I save this, then it's splitting on top of the thing I had, it's splitting on top of the image I had, the rounded corners one, and it's just discarding it completely because by default, the mode of operation when you're blitting multiple images is just overwrite or whatever is there. That's the normal mode of operation. You overwrite whatever is there. So you're drawing on top of the previous images. But there are ways for you to control how an image that is being drawn interacts with the images below. And these different modes of operation, these different ways to interact with the images or the different ways in which the Im images interact give you different results. So usually the mode is the normal mode that overwrites, but I'm changing this mode to a different mode. So now the mode is multiply, and that's just mode number three. When you're in multiply mode, what Reaper is going to do is take every pixel of the image that was already there. So again, I'm going to comment this out so you can see the image that was already there. The image is black and white and the pixels are going to be multiplied by the pixels of the image that we are about to render. When we render the next one, so everywhere you have a black that's alpha is equal to zero because of the code that we ran here before. In red and green and blue, they are all equal to zero. So when you're multiplying by zero, you end up with something that is completely transparent. And that's the case here. I mean, yeah, it looks black, but you can you know already that when I enable the compositing, then it's not black, it's transparent. The alpha is also zero. And um, when you're multiplying by white, so I'll disable this again so we can look at it. White is completely uh, opaque in this case, and the red, the green, and the blue are all one, because in Reaper colors range from zero to one. So they are all one, you're multiplying by one. And when you multiply by one, you end up with what you started with. So in the case of this composite, I have a camera that is bringing in my face, the, the, the image from my face, and it's being multiplied by one, in the white areas. So you end up with rounded corners around my face. So that's how the mask works. Now let's look at the composite. How am I putting the mask on top of the desktop? Oh, another thing I should mention just before I go. Uh, when I say input track zero, I mean input track is the tracks below me. So I am applying the effect to this item and input track zero corresponds to this one, input track one corresponds to this one, and I guess input track two and three and four would correspond to the ones below. But in this case, I only have two media items below this one. So input track zero is not the same as just bleating the number zero. Bleating the number zero is the current item, the one on which the effect was applied. Input track zero means the track right below. So the input that is right below here. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's look at the composite. This effect is, first of all, defining a variable because I want to say what is the size of the face on the screen. I can change that easily and then make it bigger, or I can make it take half the screen, both horizontally and vertically, so it takes one fourth of the area, but it takes half of each dimension. Anyway, I like it taking one fourth of the screen. And this is one an another one of those variables in which I want to change the mode of operation, the mode meaning the way that the tracks interact when I'm rendering multiple images on top of one another. And this is one of those cryptic flags, so I assigned it to a variable to, to communicate its intent. And we'll talk about what this mode is in a moment. Then I'm doing the color space switch. I guess this one is necessary. Let me try it. Oh yeah, that one is definitely necessary. So I think it's always a good idea when I'm talking about uh, doing compositing with alpha, so transparency, I always enable this mode of operation, but yeah, in this case, it's actually required. Anyway, what I'm doing now is first, I'm blitting the second track below me. So uh, this is tracks, not the second, 
I'm blitzing track two below me, which is the third track. So this is track zero, this is track one, this is track two. So by this point, I am blitzing the image from my computer. I will comment out everything else. And you can see that for now, all I have is just the image from my computer. I blitzed the image from my computer. Now I'm going to change the mode of operation and render my face. So without changing the mode of operation, you end up with an image on top here because I am blitzing the second image, that's the image from my face. It's input track zero. So as you can see, it's input track zero, which is my face with the rounded corners already. You can see that the masked overlay example is on top of the masked rounded corners. So this is already my face with rounded corners. And I am not only blitzing on the whole screen, but I'm actually putting some extra optional parameters here. So it blitz on the top right. And you can read the documentation hitting F1 to learn more about this. You can find GFX split and you can see all the different arguments or you can just put your cursor on top and hit command or probably control on a PC K and you'll see here all the arguments. And the arguments are first preserve ratio, preserve aspect ratio. And that's because if what the coordinates we end up passing do not match the source of the video, then I don't want to distort. I don't want the image to become stretched. And then the position. So I want to put this on the top right. So the X is the width of the screen and one minus the size, and that's one fourth of the screen. So I end up with three fourths of the screen. This is three fourths of the screen. That's where this X is right here. And then Y is zero because I want to be on the top. So it's right there. And then the width and the height of the uh, overlay. So that is just the project width times one fourth, the project height times one fourth. And this puts my face on top of the, it puts my, my face here on top of the computer, but you can see here that it's not doing transparency. It's putting some black pixels here. And that's why, it, and that's because it is using this, the alpha information from the track below. So it's using the alpha information from the computer screen. And that's not what we want. We want to use the alpha information that is coming from the image that is on top. And there is this optional flag that you can pass to mode that tells, oh, respect the alpha from the source, which is the image that is here on top. So when I save this and look at it, now it's doing the right thing. It's rendering these pixels as transparent. And that's all there is to it. That's how this masked overlay works. Now let's move on to the effect that is doing both. So this effect is both doing the masking, so it's putting the rounded corners, and doing the compositing. So it's putting my face on top of the computer screen. So you can see that this code looks a lot like the ones we, we just saw. It is very similar. It's doing both of the video processors in one but it is uh, it needs to use a temporary image in order to do the compositing, in order to do the masking before the compositing. So let's look at this. So first I have the size that's the same as before, and I, I have three declarations of mode, multiply and use source alpha we saw before, but I also will need here to uh, disable one of these mode switches, because when you switch to a mode, you are in that mode until you switch to another mode. And I don't want to be in one of these modes forever. So I'll have also a flag here for switching back to the normal mode. And as I mentioned before, the normal mode is overwrite whatever is in the tracks below. When you're drawing on top of, of a track, draw on top and overwrite whatever is there. So that's the normal mode of operation. And I will want to switch back to it. So now I am doing the compositing with the arrow, which I guess makes some things simpler to understand. For instance, if I turn off RGBA, then it comes black and white and 
it is black when it was supposed to be transparent. So yeah, definitely you want the color space to be RGBA. Then, this is the line that sets up the trick to use a temporary image. Because I will want to do the two steps we looked at before the masking and the composite, I will want to do those two in order. First, I will do the masking, and then I will do the composite. But I need to do the masking in a temporary image that I will then overlay, or composite, on top of the other one. The way this works is, first of all, I have a way to allocate a temporary image, and I need to pass the dimensions of that temporary image. And I can assign that to a variable. Anytime you are allocating an image, it is super important that you manage the resources you use and free the image. If you don't free the image, then the composite doesn't work. I will save this and you can see it worked for just a couple of frames, but then it didn't work probably because I uh, exhausted some resources that then Reaper didn't give me any more and then I would just render or maybe even stop the that part of the video processor from working. It's still overlaying, but the masking is no longer working. So make sure you're always freeing the, res the resources you use, you use, and then the compositing works. So that's the allocation and that's freeing that resource. But I will want to do the thing with the mask that we looked at before. So I will want to bleed the, the image with the rounded corners or the arrow in this case. And I will want to bleed with the multiply mode, my face on top of it. But I am doing that in the temporary image, the masked overlay. So I don't want to do that on the screen. I want to do that on the temporary image. So I'm setting up this JFX destination variable. And this is where you are blitting. So when you say GFX blit, if you don't have any of this GFX destination, then by default, you are blitting to the frame buffer that is your screen. That is this frame buffer. But you can set this GFX destination thing, and then you are blitting into the GFX destination, which in this case is our temporary image. So you can blit to different places. And there is no way for you to say when you're blitting that you want to you want to blit to mask overlay. It would be nice maybe to have this as an option to blit and then you could say where you want to blit to, but that's not how the API works. You have to set this GFX destination and then when you blit, you are blitting to the destination. So then we do the thing we did before. We blit zero, which is the current image, the current item, and that's the one where we have the arrow. And then evil rect is doing the trick of taking the red from the image and applying that to the alpha, making the arrow transparent. We switch to multiply mode and then we bleed the input track zero, which is the track right below us. And that's our face. So up to this point, if I render just this, I will also free the image. But if I render just this, then you shouldn't see much. Yeah, you're not seeing the masked input this time. You're not seeing my masked face this time. And that's because I am blitting all into this destination thing, all into this uh, temporary image I'm allocating. So by the end of the day, this video processor doesn't render anything to the frame buffer. So I guess Reaper by default will just render the image that was there as your frame buffer is will render the image that was there as your output for the video. So that's just everything here is in a temporary image, in a temporary variable. Now we will switch back to GFX destination minus one. That's a special value. It's not a temporary image like this one. Minus one is a special value that means the frame buffer. So when we do this line from this point on, we are blitzing onto the frame buffer that ends up being the actual image. And this time we want to blit with normal mode because we are overriding whatever was in the frame buffer, right? So let's take a moment to appreciate what this line is doing by 
removing everything that comes after this. So I am doing all the shenanigans of doing the temporary image here and there, but I'm not actually using the temporary image, so you can disregard all that. And the GFX destination is the frame buffer, and I'm now in mode normal. So when I play it, I am just showing the computer, which is input track zero one. That's the one. So yeah. we are just splitting there. But remember that before here, we set the mode to multiply. What happens if I don't switch back to mode normal? Then I am now blitting on top of what I, with multiply, with multiply mode, I am blitting on, I'm multiplying by whatever was in the frame buffer before. And that is usually garbage. So when you begin working with the video processor, usually whatever is in the frame buffer is garbage. If you want like a black screen on the frame buffer, which I guess would be a reasonable default, then you have to be explicit and you have to come here and say GFX uh, rect fill or fill rect. You have to say fill rect. And then you have to pass in the coordinates, which would be probably 00, zero project with project height. But I'm not saving this just so you can see what happens if you don't have something as a default. You end up with a lot of garbage in your screen. But if you want to have a black screen, then you can say, I just saved now, and then this will actually have a black screen to begin with, or not, I don't know. Oh, probably not, because I am doing this few rack in, not in normal mode, but in multiply mode. So I guess I need to comment this as well. Yeah, and now this is doing something. This is filling a rectangle, and I'm also bleeding, so you don't see the black rectangle. But now I can comment this out and yeah, uh, well, I guess this is not really doing the fill right. I don't know, it's still showing the arrow on the screen. In any case, the point here is, you can think of the frame buffer when you begin with as garbage. You don't want to rely on whatever is on the frame buffer. Oh, the problem is, is that I was doing the fill right before the destination, so I ended up blitzing into the temporary image. Let's see this now. Yeah, now this is a black screen, great. So I, I will get rid of the fuel rack. That was for demonstration purposes. I will get rid of these comments. And I will come back here to normal. I will blit the image. And then I'll do the thing I did before. I'll switch to the mode where I'm using the alpha from the overlay that I'm about to blit. And the overlay I'm about to blit is the temporary image in the dimensions, same as before. Save this. And then you have your overlay and your uh, masking on the same effect. So the trick is to just use a temporary variable to do the masking and then blitz the temporary buffer on top of the current one, the, the one that was the computer screen in this case. Awesome. Okay, two more, but they are almost exactly the same. The ones that do the transition. So now let's look at the transition one. This is the one that is going from top to bottom. So uh, the top is black and the bottom is white. Is this the one that we usually use? Let me think about this. And uh, no, I just did some cleanup here to uh, actually get the right effects in place. And I also cleaned a bunch of tracks that I had there as demonstration. That's usually how we do the compositing in the previous video processors. The source was the black was on the bottom and the white was on the top. And that's how this transition is going to work as well. You can see that the code here is very similar to the one we just looked at. It's doing both the masking and the overlay all in one effect. The only difference really is that I'm not blitzing to the top right. I'm blitzing on top of the whole screen. That's the story of the transition. And if you want to do it the other way around, if you want to transition from top to bottom, so like so, from top to bottom, then what you do is just you invert the input tracks here. So when you are masking, you mask input track one, so uh, that's input track zero, that's input track one. So we're masking the bottom one, and that will correspond to white. So whatever 
there is white in the mask, it will show the bottom one because I said input track one. And then input track zero is what I'm putting right below the mask. So that's how the transition works from top to bottom. The effect is exactly the same, except that these two numbers are reversed. And that is it. Before I leave, I want to shout out to the people here on this thread, on the forum. They inspired me to write this. In fact, all these effects are variations of and simplifications of effects written by this user. And I really appreciate they uh, have not only uh, implemented most of the things I'm talking about, but also explain a lot of the things that I'm talking about. And that's how I learned about compositing and alpha masking and um, all of these modes of operation and whatnot. And even the trick of using temporary variables I learned from reading their code. So thanks a lot for uh, all the work that you all did. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope that you uh, can use this and get some great rounded corners or some silly transitions, whatever suits your fancy. Thanks for watching and I see you on the next one. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to learn more about Reaper and programming. And yeah, that's it. Bye.